among the many things that the COVID-19 pandemic has fueled. Conscious consumerism is one of the biggest, and a large number of companies have responded by announcing net zero or carbon neutral commitments, pledging to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and investing in climate action. With growing alertness and demand for climate action amongst consumers, adopting environmental, social, and governance ESG measures is now more important than ever for businesses of all sizes to thrive in the present and also the future. This research will be covering the following topics. What is ESG management? Background of the emergence of ESG. Importance of ESG. Recent studies emphasizing the rise of ESG and statistics and challenges of ESG. First of all, what is ESG management? In the past, a company's value was evaluated based on its core technology, market share, and financial stability. However, climate change and the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic have further increased the importance of the non-financial value of companies as represented by ESG. ESG is an acronym for Environmental, Social, and Governance Management. Together, these describe whether a company fulfills its responsibility towards the environment through eco-friendly management, whether it fulfills its social responsibilities by contributing to customers, shareholders, and employees, and whether the governance structure is transparent, such as in succession planning. For example, no matter how excellent a company's product or technology is, if unethical behavior, environmental pollution, abuse of authority, industrial accidents, or consumer damage occur in the production or development process, customers will eventually move away from the company and its products. Therefore, ESG management is a key factor for a company to achieve sustainable development from a long-term perspective, and it can be further described as a non-financial indicator that has a significant impact on corporate value. Sustainable development first came to the fore in 1987 in a report called Our Common Future, which was jointly adopted by the United Nations Environment Programme and the World Commission on Environment and Development. Also known as the Brent Land Report, it defines sustainable development as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Afterwards, UNEP adopted the Rio Declaration at the 1992 Rio Conference, establishing the world's three major environmental conventions, the Convention on Climate Change, the Convention on Biological Diversity, and the Convention on Combat Desertification. In 2006, the UNPRI, Principles for Responsible Investment, the cornerstone of current ESG management was formed. The UNPRI is built on the principle of considering issues related to environment, society, and governance in the establishment of investment policies, corporate decision-making, and asset management. In 2019, the Business Roundtable, an annual meeting attended by the most influential CEOs in the U.S., such as those of Apple, Amazon, and Walmart, abolished the principle of maximizing shareholder profits which until that point had been the most important purpose of companies, and presented a new corporate purpose that integrates the values of all of a company's stakeholders. BlackRock, a global asset management company, is a major shareholder in many well-known companies around the world. In 2021, BlackRock's CEO announced to all companies it invested in that they needed to make their business model align with net zero or carbon neutrality, reducing greenhouse gases as much as possible to reduce actual emissions to zero by 2050 and disclose a business plan to achieve it. This suggests that even BlackRock, the world's most influential asset management company, considers ESG management to be crucial. Additionally, global investment institutions such as BlackRock have already made official declarations that they will not invest in companies with poor ESG ratings. 
and outside of business itself. There are many strategies that correspond to ESG among the key policies of the current Biden administration. One of them is that the United States has officially declared a goal of net zero by 2050 and the $1 trillion infrastructure bill has been passed by the Senate. Moody's and S&P, world's renowned rating agencies, now evaluate a company's credit by considering ESG in addition to its existing financial value. On top of this, similarly to BlackRock, global companies such as Apple have said they would not do business with suppliers in the future if they do not establish an ESG management system. All in all, new ESG-driven regulations are expected to be strengthened and newly created in the future, and companies that refuse to adapt are likely to be alienated from investors and consumers. Therefore, many companies are setting long-term goals and building their business models based on ESG. Numerous recent studies highlight the benefits and rising implementation of ESG management across global corporations. One such study, conducted by the Journal of Corporate Finance, confirms the inverse relationship between ESG government ratings and IPO underpricing, such that as ESG rating increases, underpricing decreases. The first table shows the multivariate analysis conducted to show this relation. This type of analysis is one of the most useful methods to determine relationships and analyze patterns among large sets of data. A negative value of negative 0.0661 on the first row and first column indicates that for every one unit improvement in the country's ESG government rating, there is a negative 0.0661 unit decrease in underpricing, meaning a 7.07% decrease. The second table on the right considers whether shareholder protection influences the association between ESG and underpricing. It is crucial to conduct tests involving extraneous variables, meaning any variables that is not the independent variable that has the potential to affect the result. Even when controlling the shareholder rights in the model, data continues to show sufficient evidence of the negative association between ESG and underpricing. Specifically, four out of five of the negative coefficients in the row ESG measure plus ESG measure times high liability standards were found to be significant, which implies that the inverse pattern in the data is not due to random chance. Thus, the analysis confirms the hypothesis that ESG government ratings are negatively correlated with firm-level IPO underpricing. Another study from the National Library of Medicine in 2022 shows how dynamic capabilities DCs, significantly affect sustainable management performance SMP, through the implementation of ESG strategy as a mediating variable. Dynamic capabilities concept centers on the firm's ability to remain competitive given a high rate of change in the environment. The study focuses on two main capabilities, which are absorptive and adaptive capability, recognizing external information and adjusting accordingly. The research was conducted on 78 firms listed on the Korea Exchange, with assets totaling more than 2 trillion Korean won. The study uses a partial least square structural equation model as this type of method is used to estimate complex cause-effects relationship. The dependent variable was the firm's sustainable management performance, referring to economic, environmental, and social performance, and the independent variable was the dynamic capabilities. The mediation variable in the study as mentioned, was the ESG strategy. In statistics, a mediating variable is one which explains the how or why of a relationship between two variables. A hypothesis test was conducted, and the results are presented in this figure. 
The results show that the absorptive capability had a value of 2.885 and adaptive capability had a value of 4.832. These values are positive and significant, meaning that there is a sufficient evidence in dynamic capacities having a positive effect on ESG strategy. In addition, the path from the ESG strategy to SMP was also positive and significant with a value of 3.022. More importantly, when the mediating variable, ESG strategy, was included in the model, the R squared of SMP further increased from 0 0.372 to 0 0.436. This demonstrates that ESG strategy implementation plays an important role in mediating between DCs and SMP. The study therefore provides evidence that firms should implement ESG strategies in order to achieve the sustainable value required by modern society. Furthermore, the study found that if firms implemented an ESG strategy through dynamic capabilities, they are more likely to achieve sustainable management performance. Another study focuses on how the relation of real earnings management, REM, and financial leverage is more positive in firms with less sustainable practices. The research states that by providing detailed information about their sustainable activities, companies can reduce information asymmetry and agency cost and may benefit, therefore, from a reduced cost of debt. Firms engaging in higher sustainable practices have more debt financing and have no incentives to engage in costly run practices to benefit from additional resources. Meanwhile, firms that engage less in ESG performance often try to attract public attention to their performance and therefore ensure long-term survival. However, given the scarcity of non-financial information, stakeholders have become more vigilant about managerial practices. Thus, with the average selection problem and the risk of being scrutinized, managers caring less about ESG practices are more likely to indulge in hidden manipulative practices through REM to get access to debt capital. To further study this topic, the research focused on five ASEAN countries to prove how the positive association between REM and financial leverage is more pronounced in firms with less sustainable practices. As presented in the table, according to the first column, real EM, higher leverage is associated with higher REM in low ESG performing firms, firms with low environmental performance, low social performance, and low governance performance. The result confirms the hypothesis and suggests that firms engaging less in ESG practices are more likely to indulge in hidden manipulative practices through REM to get access to debt capital. As much as ESG is a recent concept, there is still an ongoing discussion on whether ESG is a priced risk factor. When dividing stocks into portfolios of long and short stocks, highly rated ESG stocks exposed to this factor would be expected to do relatively well in bad ESG times and relatively poor in good times. Thus, they function as hedges against climate risk. For instance, if inflation is a factor, investors may prefer securities that offer higher returns when inflation increases but will be willing to accept lower returns on such securities when inflation falls. Like the hypothetical inflation factor, to the extent that investors prefer highly rated ESG companies for social reasons, the result will be higher prices and lower expected returns. However, from the point of view of the company and society, there will be benefits. The lower expected returns imply a lower discount rate and, thereby, greater investment in green projects and higher market values for green companies. Due to the complications in low expected returns for individuals with contribution to society, the jury is still out on whether there is an ESG risk factor. To conclude, investors' preferences for companies with high ESG rate ratings can lead to lower cost of equity capital that encourage investment in green technologies. 
Although there is a rising demand for roles in ESG, there are downsides to be aware of as well. The most controversial issue in the ESG bond market is the possibility of greenwashing for issued bonds. Greenwashing refers to raising funds through bond issuance while presenting goals or achievements that are far from eco-friendly management in reality. There are already cases of issued ESG bonds that have been criticized for not meeting ESG purposes abroad. The French high-end luxury fashion house Chanel has recently been criticized for greenwashing after it was revealed that it failed to meet its 2021 renewable energy goal, which it proposed while issuing ESG bonds. The ESG bonds of Tesco, the UK's largest supermarket chain, have also come under fire for presenting a target of reducing the company's annual carbon emissions by only 2%. As the level of scrutiny and criticism surrounding greenwashing increases, bond issuers are beginning to weigh the pros and cons of issuing ESG bonds more closely. If ESG bonds are successfully issued, procurement costs can be lowered thanks to the green premium, but after issuance, the level of surveillance by society increases, creating new stress. In this situation, some companies are holding back from issuing ESG bonds, citing the rapidly changing regulatory environment and reputational risk. The lack of transparency of means for investors to determine the legitimacy of their investments is also becoming an issue in the bond market. According to the results of the second 2021 survey, recently released by the International Climate Bond Initiative, only 57% of green bond issuers disclosed both details of use of funds and their environmental impact. 77% of the cases disclosed the details of the use of funds, but only 59% of the cases disclosed the environmental impact. With these potential downsides, yet with its expanding redefining impact on business including IPO underpricing, sustainable management performance, leverage, and real earnings management, ESG has emerged as a significant topic in the financial market and industry, especially in the era of COVID-19. In 2021, the trend of ESG through the economy, such as in management, consumption, and investment, has now become a daily routine. In the past, profit maximization was regarded as the highest virtue of a company, but now interest in corporate social responsibility and sustainable management is growing. If companies neglect ESG management, they may face various risks ranging from effects to the business itself, its credit ratings, or a regulatory response, and as a result, they may lose trust from key stakeholders such as investors, customers, and society. Therefore, preparing and implementing ESG management will become an essential survival strategy over time, not an option. Thank you.